Okay, we're going to be grafting some cherimoyas today. And so I got some, uh, some science from a buddy of mine who's got a real good uh, variety of cherimoya called Dream. Uh, there, you could do a whole other segment on how to pick the right kind of wood for science. You don't just, any old stick is not, not all the same. You want ones that have buds that are getting ready to push out. Um, I didn't really have any prepared, but this is what I had to work with, so that's what I'm going to use. I have uh, several different rootstocks here. These are just from seedlings of cherimoya. Uh, cherimoya does best on other cherimoya rootstock, but you can put it on other Anona species as well. But uh, for today, I'm going to put them on these seedlings. Uh, the reason you do this, seedlings uh, are the mix of two different plants. You never know what you're going to get. You may get something excellent, or you may get fruit that's terrible. By putting on uh, a known variety, I know the kind of fruit that I'm going to get, and uh, this one, like I said, is very good. Now, I always use some calipers to figure out where I want to cut uh, my rootstock off. Nobody else that I know does this, but OCD man says use your calipers. So I'll measure this and then kind of find the height that's the same on my rootstock, which is about there, and then I'm going to cut the top of this off. Now, again, if I had really prepped this well, I would have trimmed some of the top of this off a few days ago and let that energy kind of come back down into the roots and make it ready to you know, push it to grow again. But again, I only got these uh, uh, scions today and I want to go ahead and put them on while they're fresh rather than wait. So what I have now is my cutoff rootstock and my scion. And again, because I measured it, they should be about the same diameter. This is actually feeling like it's a little bit big. I'm going to check this one more time. Yeah, because I'm going to go down a little bit lower with this. Okay, so then what I want to do, uh, and actually you see that these are, are wrapped. Uh, this is called parafilm. If you're not a scientist, you probably don't have a bunch of parafilm sitting around your house. Uh, what parafilm is, is it is a uh, laboratory grade um, film. If uh, saran wrap and wax paper had a love child, it would be parafilm. It's a little bit stretchy, so it's, it's really good for cutting, but it's very thin. So I have this whole thing wrapped so it won't dry out, but it's thin enough that when these buds come to push through, they can push through the parafilm without any problem. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cleft graft on this. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, leftover piece of rootstock here and split it right down the middle. And I'm going to go down, I'm going to look down, make sure I get a real sharp knife, and go straight down the middle. About, I like to go about two inches. Uh, I think the farther you go, the more uh, cambium connection you're going to have. And then on this, I want to see about how far that down is. That is, okay, so I'm going to start my cut on the sign about here. Now I've got buds on both sides. And I want to leave those if I can, so I'm going to do my cuts. I'm not going to cut through the buds, I'm going to cut along the side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do, so i got just one cut, and I'm going to go straight down, all the way to the end, and off. And then I'm going to cut on the other side, and I like to use my finger, and to kind of, so I know I'm doing it exactly on the opposite side, and come down one cut here, and try to get this as best as I can, down to a point. Now that's not a perfect point. You don't want to go back and whittle this. Uh, if you can do it in one cut, that's great. I'm going to do a tiny little cut here just at the end just to kind of sharpen it up a little bit so that I don't have a gap. So once I've got that done, uh, I also like to take this and just take the shoulders off of the top of that, make a little point. Doesn't really do anything except that it makes it a little easier uh, when you're wrapping it. So I want to slide this down, and what you want, is you can see, the white part here is dead wood. There's no, it doesn't do anything uh, growing on this wood here. And around the outside of this, you see this nice little layer of green. That's the cambium. You're going to have that same layer of green on your rootstock. And the idea is to get that cambium on the rootstock lined up with the cambium on the scion. You know, I need to make this just a little bit deeper, because I cut a little a little bit deeper on my hut and then see if this will fit in there and it should fit in you should have just a little bit of this call it they call that the church window a little bit above the uh, 
the rootstock. It's a little bit of cyan showing. And if you look, this should fit a seam together really nice and tight. If it doesn't, if it's too small and, it, and it, it's kind of in the, don't put it in the center, put it all the way to one side. So at least one side is going to have that cambium lined up just perfectly. Now, if you got the same size, both sides should line up. But if they don't, mine actually feels a little bit small. So I'm just going to make sure that this, this side over here has the cambium lined up. And if that means there's a little gap over here, that's okay. As long as one side is lined up, uh, you're going to be good. So what we're going to do after that is we're going to take some grafting tape. Now this is much thicker and heavier than the parafilm. Uh, the plant cannot grow through this. Eventually you'll have to cut this off. Sometimes it will photodegrade a little bit, but I usually have to end up cutting it off. So I'm going to take a piece about 8 to 12 inches long, depending on how big your, uh, your graft is. And then starting, I like to start at the bottom. There's not really a right or wrong way to do that. And I'm just going to wrap it around itself. And the idea you want to hold this nice and tight because you want to keep that cambium together. If you have an air gap in there, uh, your graft is not going to take. So you want to pull it as nice and tight as you can. And make sure you get the whole thing. Again, you don't want any of this drying out. That's what's going to hurt your plant is if you have air getting in the middle. And so just while I'm holding it, nice and tight and you want to stretch this tape a little bit but not so much that it breaks. Now if it does break it's not a big deal you can go back and start again wrapping it over top of the break and it will uh, hold itself back together. This tape is not sticky. Uh, actually some people if you don't want to go out and buy a bunch of tape you can cut up some uh, clear plastic bags and uh, it works just as well. Tape's just a little more convenient. So I'm going to keep wrapping this all the way up to the top. And again, I want to make sure that that cambium layer is lined up at, on, at least on one side. And I'm going to wrap this all the way up until I get up to the parafilm. And then if I want to go down another layer because I have some extra tape, that's fine. Now some people will, after they are finished with this tape, will go ahead and wrap this tape in parafilm as well. I don't really think that's necessary. Um, this tape is not going to, nothing's going to dry out from there. Once you're done, you can kind of make a loop and just tie it off. Some people leave the front, the edge hanging out so that you can tie the two in a knot. However you want to do it is fine. And then the most important thing of all is label your plants. So I'm going to take a label. Now for labels, um, you can go buy fancy labels. I use a piece of uh, window blind, mini blind pieces. You can get this stuff free on Craigslist or if you have old blinds and throw them out, cut them up into little pieces. Um, because they're bent, they stay nice and straight. And so I'm just going to label this as a dream and I'm going to put the date on there so I have an idea of how long it took. If you also have your rootstock labeled, uh, that's not a bad idea too. You can kind of see how they do on different types of rootstocks. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this out in the sun and let it grow. And as you can see, there's not much soil in here. This is really ready to be potted up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till this breaks bud on it. And once it starts coming out, I can pot it up much better. And that's just going to encourage it to grow and keep growing out. But it's best to wait until uh, the graft is taken before you pot it up. If you pot it up now, um, sometimes the stress, it'll put, it in, it'll put its growth into the roots and you may lose the top. Now what's going to happen as this is starting to grow, hopefully all of these buds or at least one of them is going to come out, leaf out, and it'll start growing. If you get any buds from the graft down coming out, you want to knock those off because the plant's going to be putting its energy there and not into your new science. So when the, if they get any buds coming below the graft, just pinch those off and you should be getting it coming uh, out the top. And it usually takes uh, anywhere from a couple days to a couple weeks depending on the plant and the time of year. If you have ones that have, if you get really good cyan wood where the buds are just about to pop, sometimes you'll get it in a couple of days. Um, but if you do start seeing below, a lot of growth below even if you've knocked it off, it may mean that your graft didn't take. Uh, check this wood and see, and again after a couple of weeks, if, it, if it's turned brown and it's hard and brittle, uh, you lost out and you have to try again.